So when we're talking about vocals and processing vocals and making them sound big and huge and all that, yep. there's a trick that you do that we've been listening to at some of our live events that I think I need a little more explanation on. Okay. I'm not doing it, and I think it's probably because I'm afraid. Yeah. Can you help me, can help I can me go help there? You. I can help you. Help me, Lee. Uh, parallel compression on vocals. So, cool. fair warning, tread lightly. This is an easy way to cause feedback in your system if you're not prepared for it, if your system's out of whack. The other thing that's really, really important is time, phase, delay compensation, that whole thing. So this console does not do delay compensation. Here's what that means. When I take this vocal and I send it to a bus that's dry and I send it to another bus that has processing on it, that extra processing, there's conversion happening. Yep. It's putting it out of time. It actually takes time to do that. So when these two things are blended together, if they're not perfectly in time, they're gonna be out of phase and it's gonna sound horrible. Right. I can tell you why I've been afraid of this. Because yeah. there's a lot of math and science you've just talked about. Your console does delay compensation. <sighs> Feel free. I love this now. <laughs> so to get the workaround here is, I have the same compressor on both groups, but one of them is just on and doing nothing just so that it's going through the okay. same process. So the processing threshold, is there. Thresholds all the way up. It's not doing anything. Output gains all Got the way it. down. It's just, just inserted. It's just Got inserted. It. Okay. Just to get everything tricked that okay. it's back in time. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna throw the band up and you're gonna hear the vocal. And then on this fader here is the vocal parallel compression. As I slide that in, the perception is that the vocal is on stage, happy, it sounds great. But when I slide that in, it's gonna to appear to come forward in the mix and become thicker. Let's, okay. let's hear it. All right. All right, here we go. And it's way more than just volume. It is. Yeah. It's a texture and it's a it thickening is. that happens yep. because of the compression. It's just like a it pushed in. Right. So how much compression are you doing on that fader? So that's just the parallel channel. That is squeezed down like mad. Yeah, it that's, is. It's a lot. So it's, it's not that much reduction, but the way it's making it sound is pumping. There's actually two compressors on it. So one's at eight to one, and there's another at four to one after that. Okay. There's another trick to this that a lot of studio guys do is to brighten it up so the silkiness comes through even more, but it can get harsh. So I've EQ'd just the parallel and have a lot of that 3.5 to cut out of it. So these two together. You are great. And I'll just pop it off. I still believe. Right? Wow. All that body. I still believe. Okay. Oh, are you routing every here. vocal into that? Every vocal in the death? Like every every vocal is going to it. Okay. So that's something you gotta be aware of since I'm not using snapshots. The difference in volume between the BGV level and the lead vocal makes it work. Okay. Because it's sending to a group, it's post fader. Got it. So the lead vocal being the loudest, it's the one triggering the right. compression. And then right. song to song, that's taken care of taken because care of those because individual of vocals are, right. are louder. You're talking about 10 dB differences anyway. That's the next thing I'm stealing from you. That is awesome. I still need you to like get an abacus and make me a chart or something, but okay. I think I'm with you. Sweet. I love to hear myself talk. <laughs> Sometimes it's actually interesting. But you know what? We talk to a lot of other interesting people too. We have a podcast. Go search for it, the MXU podcast.